Yippee! So I'm finally able to get back to working on my dragon journal. I still feel like the cover needs a little work. So what I've decided to do is take these little Tim Holtz ring fasteners and I have one of them here and then I have this dragon pendant that I believe is from Michael's and I want to put it on the spine of the book. So what I've done is I took my Tim Holtz center ruler and found the center of it and just so that I can see where it's going to go and I've I've opened up the signature I'm going to lay it down like that and then I'm going to come in with my big bite crocodile and I have it set to the small setting there and I'm just going to turn it to the side here and bring that in. I apologize that you're not going to be able to see it, but I'm just going to lay it in there. And I'm going to kind of go over on my side. Ooh, that's, that is kind of difficult to see. I wonder if my handheld one would be easier. Let me just look here if I can see a little bit better with it. I don't want to start pressing it until, um, because it's going through fabric and, uh, no, I think I have, I, it's because it's going to go through fabric and the book, I need to just bring it in it may not be exactly right about there. And then I can kind of start bringing it down. There we go. Okay, I can see exactly where it is. I apologize that you guys can't see. But I want it just there. I think that is about center. And then you just have to press it down. And that's what's nice about this one, this big one, it gives you some leverage. And I'm just going to take a pokey tool and push that through. It probably would go through okay on its own. I'm going to turn it over. And yeah, there's just a little bit of fabric there. But then I'm going to set an eyelet in there also. I have one of these tiny little bitty ones and let's see, I have to change this setting to the smaller eyelet setting. So you just kind of flip it around and then it goes to that and kind of clicks in. And then once again, you bring your book in and I'm sorry, you can't see, but you just set that Oh, I need to bring this forward so it goes to the eyelet. Yeah. And you just, all you have to do is bring it in, set your eyelet in the center, and then push down. And it should set it. Now there's still some fabric in there, but that's not a big deal. Okay. And then... What's nice about this little Tim Holtz thing is, and I probably didn't need that eyelet there, but I wanted it to be nice and strong. All you have to do is loop this in to that hole. And then I'm gonna turn it over 
and then all you have to do is bring those prongs down so that they they are secure now this one here is just a little bit long <coughs> sorry i'm gonna take a pair of wire cutters and i'm just gonna snip off that edge i don't think i need all that length Maybe I need to grab my other pair. Maybe these are a little bit sharper. Yeah, those were better. And then that way, it still kind of, kind of um, hangs over the edge. I don't want somebody to get poked. So I'm going to just snip off a tiny bit more. need to kind of do both use both I think there we go okay huh. yeah I just ever so slightly took part of that off and then I'm gonna take a pair of hemostats and clamp that down so it's not sticking up and it won't snag anything I think that's going to be okay so that's my dragon <coughs> my dragon charm so I do like that okay now the next thing I wanted to do is add some other elements to it. I've thought about some of these things. These are just made with molds and I'm going to show you one. Oh yeah. So just these molds and I put air dry molding clay in there and then they are so light and then you paint them and then put golden wax on there the other thing i've thought about doing is the word dragon but i don't have all the letters so let's let's kind of work on that i'm going to show you what i have for that so I have these molds. Let's see. I think they were Stamparia molds. And they are the alphabet. You're not going to be able to see them very good on my white uh, table. But I also need to go get some baby powder. So let me go grab that. So what I've done is I've brought in a darker background so you can see. Now there's a couple of things that I use. One is this Delight Air Dry Modeling Compound. I do have some of this in my Etsy store. The other thing I've used is the Pourable Resin. The difference is the Pourable Resin is quite heavy. But it, I think it gives you a really nice detail. The nice thing about the modeling compound is it's extremely light. So that's what I'm going to use right now. I've gone ahead and just taken some plain old baby powder and sprinkled some in these molds. And all you have to do, let me just take a pair of scissors and cut this out, is smash it into the mold itself, let it dry a little bit, and then 
and then pull it out. So I'm going to do that. Some of this needs to be worked. That feels a little bit dry there. It's been a while since I've done any of these. So my compound may be a little bit dry. I may need to open up another one. But I'm going to go ahead and do this. And then what you do is you take a scraper, some kind of a scraper, so that you have an even edge and you just scrape off your modeling clay so it's not quite so thick. You see how that one's coming off nicely? And then you just kind of press it in and that will hold. So I'm going to do that with both that the alphabet and I'm also going to do these here. Um, I like these. So I'll be back with you guys once I'm done with these and we'll we'll take a look at them at what they they look like. I think I had to use this side instead. <laughs> so one thing I have found out that I didn't know before is if your modeling clay feels a little bit on the dry side just take a tiny bit of water oops, and work it in and it will be much easier to put in the molds. Now I may have gotten just a little bit too much here, but I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe a tiny bit, but that's okay. We'll clean it up. But... It will dry after a little bit and because uh, that's what this stuff does is it does eventually dry and that's what makes it solid. So already I can tell with massaging it, it's coming off my hands and it's, it's not quite so sticky. So it's absorbing that water. And like I said, I think it's going to make it a lot easier to put into the molds. I may have just discovered something new. Because you can see here, I have put it in the molds here, but it's, it's not solid or soft on the top as to where this, once I run the scraper over it, I think it's going to be soft. Now I finished these up and once I had added the, the, the paste to the mold, I wet my fingers and ran it over the top. Yes, this is definitely much easier. Now remember, I did go ahead and put in a little bit of baby powder in each one so that um, they would release easy. Now I feel one little spot there is very tough. So I don't know if it got mixed in, but this is definitely much easier now. We're going to see how these turn out. I think I need a little bit over there. Yeah, these definitely are going into the mold much easier. And see this one, it doesn't have enough here. It's not gone all the way to the edge. So now let's take our scraper. Oh yeah, that's much better. Oh yes. So that's something, a, a learning curve there, guys. 
if your modeling paste is too dry and won't spread well over the top of your your mold just add some water to it because you want it to be flat on this side because you want to be able to glue it down to your to your image to your surface so I'm going to go ahead and continue to do this and um, yeah I think this is this was a good good discovery good find and then you just kind of bring that all forward and it'll be nice and flat in your mold so once again real quick i do want to tell you guys what i used it's air dry modeling compound you can buy it at michael's and i discovered that if you add water to it, it goes into your mold much easier. Now you can see this is the alphabet. I have every letter. Then I will paint them once they dry. Oops, I'm so sorry, you guys. And what I did is once I put it in the mold, then I wet my hand and I went over the top of them just to smooth them down even more and then I took a paper towel and cleaned all around the edge so those letters are drying then the same thing with these the uh, fleur de lay they are drying and again I took my wet finger I went over the top and smoothed it and I figured since I was in the process of you know having all of that stuff out I would do some uh, keyholes and that's what those are and then if you remember I did do this dragon but it's too big for the journal so what I did is I just put some of that modeling compound in the mold and I'm only going to do the head. So we're going to see what those look like when they dry out. So it's the next day and I have pulled out a lot of my um, little blocks but you can see this R got stuck. It's this one right here. You can't see the image real well, but thank goodness I had an R from a previous time. And I'm, I'm just gonna show you. So all I do is just kind of push out and then hopefully it will release them completely. This one looks like it's getting stuck too. So I think they need to dry a little bit more. So I'm just gonna put them off to the side and let them dry. Maybe adding that water was not the best thing, but my A, which is the one I did need, is perfect. So because these are a pretty good size and they need to fit on my journal, I just take a, a scalpel or you could do a craft knife. Yeah, I can feel that they're still a little bit soft and I just cut them down. Okay, and I think I need to pull some off this edge too. I want to do it without doing what I did just there, is <laughs> pulling off part of the A. 
it's because this one is still soft. It's not completely dried. But I think it's going to be okay. Once you paint it and then add your waxed Um, maybe if I come in here with a pair of snips, it might be easier. Yeah, that's easier. And a much cleaner line. And then I even think I can come in here a little bit. Yeah. And then... I just took a nail brush and just run it, ran it across to smooth those out a little bit. So let me paint these up and then you guys can see what they look like. I'm just gonna put black acrylic paint over the top of them, and then I'll do some gold um, gilding wax over that. Okay, up here toward the top of my desk is all my letters. I just painted them using this metallic uh, charcoal black paint. It's acrylic paint from Michael's or Joann's. But while these are drying, I thought I would work on the back cover a little bit. Now, what I've gone ahead and done, and let me just bring you out a little bit. I've gone ahead and taken from Jaff's kit. Now, the kit I have used is called Medieval Myths manuscripts and maidens kit this is the add-on kit and it has oh where is it in the description she talks about the kit itself let me pull it up here she explains about the kit and where it comes from and so that that was fun to read um, but what I've done is I went ahead and printed off everything and I liked this corner pocket for my letter from the journal maker and what I always do is I print off the letter it explains to people what, what they should do with the journal, that they should write in it. I sign it and I date it. And I also always insert it into some parchment paper that I've coffee dyed and then stamped with a little bit of vintage photo. And what I did is when I glued this down, I used my Beacon 3-in-1 glue. And I went ahead and stuck this in here prior to gluing it down so that it would have a little bit of a, a give. So there would be more than enough room for this letter. Okay, and so that's going to go there. And, well, that's why I couldn't get that in. I kept thinking, why can't I get that in? It's because my wax seal was in the way. So let's work on this. Also in the kit was this page. And up here in this corner was this image of this scroll and map and I thought that would be good there and then there's this image that says here be dragons and I thought I would maybe put that there but let's go ahead and work on the letter first 
and look what I've done here. Boy, that took a <laughs> that took a hot minute. Let me put the journal off to the side and I'm going to show you what I do with my letters. Like I said, I always have a wax seal. I happen to have one that was custom made. There is a J and an H on it. And what I do is I use some of my Italian hemp thread to tie it. And I was lucky enough to buy six more of these big spools of this. So like I've been saying all along, the stuff is in my shop. And I think what I'm going to do is when I make up some new ones, I'm going to put in double the amount of string. So what is ever, what is ever in my shop right now, and I can't remember how many yards I have, but you will get two of those packs for whatever price is listed. And when I make up some new ones, since I was able to buy six more rolls, I will put double the amount of string in there for you guys. So what I like to do is I take my wax seal and I like to have it raised up because when you go to wrap this around your letter, you're going to want it to be your wax seal to be elevated a little bit so that you can wrap this around. And what I like to do is take some of these stamping up dimensionals. Now, I don't know if this black one is going to be big enough. So I'm just going to use this one here. What I do is I take my thread and I lay it behind my wax seal and I kind of look at to make sure the orientation of my J and H is correct and then what I do is I take this dimensional and put it on there and then I also take Oh, you could even take just a little piece of scotch tape just to make sure that doesn't come up. And I'm just going to take ever so slightly piece here. And I'm going to add it right there. And then that way, this thread is not going to move. And then what I do is I glue this down and I actually, I think I'm going to put two of these because I've got enough room to do that. And then that way, when I put this on here, I've got some space in between the wax seal and my paper and so I'm just going to pull these off they're adhesive but I always add just a tiny bit more glue and I'm just going to take a little bit of my beacons glue I hope this is not clogged up I have not used my glue since I got back from my trip so let me just add a little bit here, there, and there. And what you want to do is have it over. I'm going to pull this over. I'm going to have it over to the side so that the wax seal, you can see it a little bit on this other side when it's over here. So I'm just going to put that there.
And so then, like I said, when I have this here, and it's a good thing it's the beacons there because <laughs> that wasn't exactly straight. Um, the part of the wax seal is over on this side and part is here. So that's going to work perfect. And then I take some of the thread and I wrap it around a couple of times and then I cut it because that's how I know how long it needs to be. And so then I just kind of pull it off to the side a little bit and then wrap it around. And then that's how my letter from the journal maker goes into my the back of my journal. So that will slip in there. And while this is drying, let's go ahead and add these two little elements here. Let's see, the map is like that. And I'm just gonna use a little, again, a little bit of my Beacon's 3-in-1 glue. You could use a glue stick if you wanted to. And I just want to break this little area up here. So I'm going to bring it up almost to where that corner is. And I think that's good there. And then I'm also going to take this Here Be Dragons banner. It's just printed on my, I think I used my thicker paper, my Epson paper. And actually, I think what I'm going to do is kind of do it that way. Okay. Now, let's slip in this letter and see what this looks like. Okay, I think that is perfect. Now, I, I was thinking, and this is sad to say, I was thinking in church of the closure. I know I should be thinking of, of other things, but I thought, what do I want to do for the closure? And I thought maybe one of those elastic bands where it just loops around and catches there. So I'm going to pull out, I think I like that idea. And the other thing I'm going to do, let's just see if this works. I thought about instead of just having this black, let's see if some of this wax paste will go on here and take off just a little of the starkness of that black, and it does. I tell you, this wax paste that you can get, there are so many uses for it. I just love this stuff. It just, look how that just made it not quite so black. And it will help blend the closure into the journal. Now I'm going to st still leave some of the black. I go on the inside here a little bit. And this will dry. This this it's creamy right now, but once I sit this down, it will dry. And so you would never know that that is an elastic band for hair. Let me put a little bit over here. I guess I forgot to get the outside. Yeah, isn't that cool? Yeah, that is perfect. Okay, so I'm going to set that up to dry there. I'm going to grab a baby wipe and wipe off my hands. And then off camera, I'm going to go ahead and put a hole in the back. You guys don't need to see me do that. I'm going to put a hole in the back there, see if I can slip that through, and then put one of those Tim holds 
knobs there to hold it closed. So I'll be back with you guys. Okay, you guys, I am so excited. It worked. It, it's going to work perfect. So this is the little Tim Holtz thing. They are called, I've, you can get them at Joann's. Uh, probably Simon Says. They are hitch fasteners. I buy them when they're on sale at Joann's. And so they have like uh, antique color, um, silver color, but you could also color them with your wax um, um, paste. But you just put it in here, you, you do your hole, and then the post screws in there. And then you do a hole with the eyelet here. And then I've taken that elastic band and I've pulled it around. Now, right now it's loose, but by the time I fill this journal up with ephemera and what have you, it's going to be tight. So I love the way that has turned out. It's, it, it doesn't take away from the, the image of the eye and stuff. So Yippee! Okay, you guys have heard me probably say this before, but I think when you're making a journal, you need to really look at the details. I'm going to give you an example. This was the letter. I It was perfectly fine when it was in here. But I thought, I want to make sure that it opens well. Well, I opened it up and I saw this. And I thought, I don't like the way that looks. That, that to me looks tacky. It doesn't look finished. So, thank goodness in Medieval Mirage, in her kit, in some of the pages, she has circle things. I just use my one inch punch and I punched it out. And so now I'm just going to take a little bit of glue here. I don't want it to go over the edge of these dots but I'm just going to put that there and let that dry so that when whomever purchases this journal, when they open up that letter, they don't see those dimensionals, those, those tacky dimensionals. So I think that's an, an important tip for you guys when you're making your journals. You really want, I mean, you can't have absolutely everything perfect, but you can sure try. So I just think that looks so much better. Okay, now let's, I'm gonna set this over to the side while that dries. Now let's work on the front. To me, the front page, it's pretty. That's the design. I think I told you I went into Canva and I found that and I printed it off. And then in Jaff's kit, she has included this book belongs to. I backed it on some black cardstock. And even though it kind of will overlap here on this image there I think it will be just fine I think it will still look good I think there needs to be more there so what I'm going to do is just take some of my glue and glue that down up in that corner And I'm just going to kind of evenly space it. Okay. Now, 
I think there needs to be something down here. It's a little bit plain to me. And I told you that I was able to purchase some more Florentine paper when I was in Italy. Once again, the packs are in my shop, or they will be. I'm working on the, uh, oh, the, um, the, the listings and the photos and what have you. But I do like that down there. I think it flows with this front page. Now, what I'm going to do is I've cut it to size, but I'm going to do a little bit more to it. I have this punch here, and what I'm going to do is punch the corners down here at the bottom so that they're not quite so square. Sorry, you couldn't see me do that, but... I think that looks a little bit better there. And then some of my Florentine paper is thicker, but this is a little bit on the thinner side. And so since this is going to be a pocket, I want to reinforce it. So what I'm going to do is let me set the book off to the side. And I have some Hebrew script. It's from probably the 1800s. I put a little bit of gold paint over the top because this has some gold here. And I'm going to lay it over the top. But what I want to do is not have it even. So... I need to make sure that, so this is the top. I'm going to have that come down over the top. And so then I need to put it there. But what I want to do is just tear along the edge so that it's just not perfectly straight. It's pretty fragile, fragile paper also. And I cut it to the size of the Florentine paper. And I'm just trying to be real, real careful here. Okay, I like that. And I only want a little bit showing. So what I need to do is grab the Florentine paper, turn it over, and only have a small part of this Hebrew script showing. So I want it to be even, as even as possible. Okay, I think that's good. And then I'm going to fold it. <laughs> I'm going to try. Let me fold it first. I think it'll be easier. All right, oops, it's kind of going cockeyed. Okay, I think that's going to be okay. Let's see what it looks like. So if I lay it there and I run it across, I think that's good enough. I think that is, that's okay. So let me use some glue stick and glue that down and it will make the the Florentine paper a little bit stronger 
So I'm just going to do that and fold that down. I may have to trim it off a little bit. There we go. And I guess it doesn't matter if it's totally perfect. And then I'm coming over here on this side. And then I'm going to glue that down there. And then I'm going to take my punch and punch a, punch a little divot here. I don't like that that's crooked. That bugs me. I just, I am just too, too OCD. I just, I just can't take it. I wish I was uh, not quite so fastidious about some of this stuff. But I can't help it. It just, it's, it's just who I am. So I'm going to pull this off. Let's try to put it straight. I think that's better. I think that's a little bit better. Now I got glue all over my fingers, but that's all right. Hopefully I got that better. I don't know. We'll see. No, not yet. <laughs> Hewitt, just let it go. Let it go. It's no big deal. What I'll do is I'll, oh, that bugs me. It's going to be okay. Just let it go, sister. Let it go. <laughs> I am going to trim a little bit here. It can be a blessing and a curse, this kind of fastidiousness. But yeah, I think that's okay. So then I'm going to bring this in. I'm going to glue this down here. And then maybe once I put in that little divot, that will help. Well, I glued the pocket down. And to me, you can hardly tell that it's not exactly straight. So I'm okay with that. And I went ahead and started putting some of the wax paste. This is the brand I'm using. It is called Brass. And I'm just going to show you real quick how easy this is. It, this brand is very, very creamy. Look at that. It just makes that fleur de lis just pop. Look at the difference. Okay, look at the difference. Let's do this one now. So I'm going to call this a video. I'm not going to glue this stuff on yet. I'm going to let it dry because we've almost been here an hour. But I wanted to show you guys how, how cool this stuff is. Let's do this dragon. Let's see what it looks like with this stuff on it. I may have to go in a little bit darker on it. If, if it doesn't look that great, then what I'll do is just paint over the dragon again. But I, I think this is okay. It just kind of makes that, um, those images kind of stand out a little bit. Try to get in there a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Oops. Throwing stuff around. But look at how light that is. Isn't that cool? I hope I I hope I have room to put it on the uh, 
on the journal but yeah look at this look at the difference there it it almost gives it the impression that it is metal but it's it's a very light clay look at that is that not just so pretty with that on there so anyway you guys i'm i'm gonna end this video like i said um we, we, I will be back for Quick Tip Thursday. I'm thinking about adding another series, doing three videos a week. Um, I think I'm going to call it Stitching Saturday or Slow Stitching Saturday because I need to get some stitching done and... I'm not finding the time to do it, but if I commit myself to a video, then I might get some stitching done. So anyway, I will see you guys again soon. Thanks. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.